Well, I'll say congratulations to Pilks. I thought I knew exactly what we were facing. We worked on stuff on the training on Tuesday. I've never seen a team completely 180 degree in the same season from one style of play and personnel to another. And they did, and they did it really well. They, the, the home game, it was like playing an all green Stoke. Whereas we've, we've come here and if anything, they, they play a very, very similar game to ourselves. I, mean, I don't think that was the reason that we conceded after four minutes, but it did take a little bit of adapting to after what we thought we was going to see versus what we actually saw. And I thought once we got our goal, there was only one team that was going to win it from that point. It's two mistakes. They haven't really threatened a lot, have they, apart from that? They had some good play and they had some penetration, but you know, how many shots can you remember? I thought we coped with what they had, bar, bar a couple of mistakes. Um, and I thought we created a, a lot of chances, but weren't, we weren't really taking as many shots as we could have done ourselves. It was a very, very close game, and I think it's one of those that you play it again not tomorrow, and it's it's 2 one us. I, I think it'll be close, but I think it was one of those that just it's a, a coin toss. So uh, disappointing because obviously it's a it's a team that's in and around us, going for promotion as well. I still think it's possible. There's nine games to go. It's a lot of football. It's a lot of points and. Looking at the fixture list everybody else has got in and around us. There's points to be dropped by everyone, including ourselves probably as well. So going flawless for the remaining 10 games was, was always going to be a big ask. I would have hoped we got further into it than the first game. Um, but it is what it is. Just got to pick ourselves up, go again next week, complete the remaining games and see where we are. If we're in a promotion spot, then fantastic. If we're not, then well, we didn't deserve to be. After a tough defeat against Pilkington, Paddock find themselves facing a new challenge, St Helens Town, a newcomer to the league. It's a must win for Paddock if they are to have any hopes of promotion this season. Due to unforeseen circumstances, this match will take place at an alternative ground nearby, the Openshaw campus, as the Butcher's Arms remains unplayable. The 4G pitches of the Openshaw campus are the new battleground for Paddock's clash against St Helens Town. Despite the challenge of playing at an alternative home ground, the team is determined to leave their mark and secure a much needed victory. Lads, if it's the same start at 11, it can't be the same start as last week, can it? Hey? Can it? Can it? The last couple of weeks, the only way we've conceded is fucking allowing the ball to bounce in and around our six yard box and 18 yard box. It's got to be fucking cleared. Mike, this is your main responsibility. The box gets fucking cleared. We do not. Yeah, it's the same mentality we had at Winston. It's the same mentality we had at Clay Brown. These are not fucking bad. <laughs> if it's in the box, it's red zone mentality. It has to fucking go. I don't care. If we're defending, you have to put your foot through it. We will deal with getting hold of the ball a little bit later. There's a time for composure, and that's when playing out. And there's a time for fucking put your foot through it, and that's when we're defending. That is the only time teams take any fucking advantage of Paddock is that we're a little bit too soft defending. Can we fucking change that? But we have to have red zone mentality. If it comes in our box, it goes, okay? That's how we conceded both fucking goals last week. Mason's let it hit him, he hadn't kept hold of it. But why is their striker the first to react? If it's us that first react, there's no goal, is there? Simple as that. So there's one mistake from him, and there's a second mistake from everybody else on the pitch by not fucking getting there and clearing it before their striker does. Why is he the first to react? Today we're the first to fucking react to everything. The first to react. Can we have that as a shout today, yeah? First to fucking react. Yeah. Get out there and let's get going, all right? Oh. Good afternoon and welcome to an overcast open shore, the alternative home ground of the day. Here's the team lineup you can see. Mason Taylor in goal, Omar, Mikey, Captain Oatsy and Michael in defense. Joe Zach Nosa midfield and up top. The devastating trio of Ronnie, Joa, and Ryan up top in the centre. Kick off then. Paddock starting off. Goes to Zach. Punts a long ball up, looking for Ronnie on the left wing. Doesn't quite find him, but Ronnie does cut in quicker than that defender. Dribbles back. Again, retaining possession. Good move. Back to Oatsy. Draws the player in. Allows his time some time to play out to Michael. Ball forward goes to Zach again. No, so can't quite control it, lose it on the side. So a bit of a scuff down the side. Ref gives the throw in to Paddock though. 
Cheeky look at the subs on the sideline. KO'd. Hasn't played for a little while. Ball bobbles in. Big hoof clearance there from Paddock. No one near it to get it, though. Bobbles out to Mikey. Not much control on the ground here. It's putting people under pressure. Zach gets it out, though. Misses Joe, unfortunately. Back out to the number two for St. Helens. Again, St. Helens did it well to keep it on the ground so far. Trying to play uh, down the feet. Eleven's trying to push past Omar. Ooh. Scary there. Gets the ball across. It's deflected for a corner, though. Corner time. Ball comes in low. It's gone straight through to the edge of the box. There's a shot. And good block there. Deflected. Easy for Mason to catch. Worrying, though, the fact that that just dri drives straight across the uh, the front of the box. Luckily, David able to have a bit of a laugh on the sidelines. Uh, Ryan pressing from the front. Ball's gone wide this time. A bit more aerial. Looking for the number two. He's done quite a bit progressively. Ronnie caught him out of the defence. And let's see if he can do it now with meta position. Ronnie driving down the left wing. Ball goes forward. Oh, he's beat the defender. It's gone straight to Ryan Katumba. Into the box. There we go. Can he find anyone? Dinks the ball across. Just, just robbed off Nose's feet. And what's this? Ref's called something back. I think someone's gone down injured. Calling for the coach. Steve Warman, his hands on the sideline there. Quick short free kick there from Captain Oatsy to Joe. Back again. It's a bit wasteful trying to find the pass on the side, but Paddock on the break. Now, what's happened here? Because Ryan was being held. Has he won the free kick? No, so was broken through. Okay, yeah, brought back Mikey then. Free kick time. Comes into the box, whipped in. Oh, it's bouncing. It was a good attempt, but it was a nice lofty free kick from Mikey. I know there was some criticism for him last game, but looking sharper today. Big hoof goal kick there. Finds the big man up top. Brought down by Michael. He's lost it off his chest, though. Defender's broken past Mikey. Can Mikey fight back? Great work from Mikey. Strength, considering the size difference. Bobbles alongside the box. See if Joe here with Omar can keep ball at bay. Somehow scurried through them. Handball there, yeah. Paddock free kick. Well done, Michael. Yeah, the call down the sideline from Ronnie. Cameraman doesn't know where to look. Pushing there. Go on, Ronnie. Driving through. Athleticism on his plate. Gets a crossing. Uh, it's easy for the keeper, but he was under pressure. Couldn't tell, though, if he got pushed. Short wall out from Mason to Oatsy. Good ball forward. There he comes, Ryan. Strength and pace. Finds Ronnie down the side again. We've had a lot of luck down this side, just not been able to have that chance of getting through. Driven ball across. Again, defender just gets there ahead of Joe. Ball back into Oatsy. It's a bit wayward, though. Joe wasn't in position for that one. But good recovery from Paddock. Good pressing. We're about halfway through the first half here. And I'd say it's looking pretty even, maybe fractionally, in Paddock's favour. Neither side have really had a devastating chance on goal, but equally, a couple of close attempts. The sack barges through the back of this player. He's probably going to get fouled that yet. <laughs> Saw that one coming a mile off. Zach, like a Terry on him. Big hoof free kick forward, though. I was on the wrong side of number 11. Oh, he's been done by him as well. Great return from Oatsy. Ball back cross to Mikey. Switches it up to left back to right back. I think Steve might have been happy with that one. Good, good recovery. Okay, here comes the short free kick. Okay, OC again. Out wide left to Ronnie. See what he can do. He gets here. One, two, three people. And I would say double up on him. The defensive principle plus one. He's beaten two of them. Balls trickled across in. Had he been pushed off the pitch though? Well, quick throw from Mikey. That's not a foul. Of course not. No set with the feint. Keeps the ball though. Goes out to Omar. Back to Zach. It's a wasteful ball from Zach. I know what he was trying to do. Trying to find Mikey up wide. Ryan Katumba though with the pressing and the strength. Bullies his way through. And Ryan, oh, just up. Joe, not quite. Just a yard short on the pace there, Joe. Nosa still retaining it. Again, trying to do his best to hold the possession here. It's nice and disciplined. Nice and uh, keeping it down the floor from Paddock. No wasted lofted balls. Nosa dropping deep. You can see how deep he's coming. It's a bit KDB in that sense. Dictating the play, making sure the play stays with Paddock rather than 
staying up high. That was a push in the back and Ryan, but no, ref's seen none of it. St. Helens trying to push out from the back now. Credit them, they are spreading from side to side quite well. The boys in blue. Good pressing from Nosa to force it back. Joe has done. The play just passed him. They're calling for offside. Almost back watching number 11. There you go, there's the whistle. A little bit late that one. There's a lot of calls for it when it happened. Quick free kick though. That's on Mikey. Mikey with a lofted ball forward. Can he find Ryan? He's found him, but it's bobbled. Can number two get in the way? Ryan's still at him. So Joe. Again, the front line for Paddock has been uh, very heavy on the press. Oh, Joe's barged into in there. Ryan with the clean up. Has the shot. Oh. I think the ref's calling the free kick there, though. Did feel a little bit heavy. We're closing on half time, though. Paddock playing out from the back. The young keeper, Mason Taylor, does prefer that. Zach drawing a heavy pressure on him quickly there. Same for Oatsy. Been left a bit short there. Now it's Nosa, though. Strength. Power. Go on, Nosa. He's managed to find the ball through to show up. Cross comes over. Not quite floated enough for Ryan, maybe, to get the strength in that. It's bounced back to St. Helens. But Zach doing his best to press. He's managed to win the battle. That's a great work. Ball comes cross side. Here comes Ronnie. Needs to cut it and try something on goal it. No, he plays it short. Ryan, oh, he's deflected. He's won it back, has he? Not quite. A little bit hesitant to get stuck in there in case he failed to play it. Back of Omar. Out seat. So for a big guy, he's got a good bit of footwork. Mikey dinks the ball over. It's a bit ambitious, though. Trying his luck. But again, we've seen Mikey score some good goals, so it's not like you know, he doesn't deserve a chance to have a shot on goal. Just that was a little bit optimistic. As the throwing comes in for St. Helens. A lot of ping pong ball here going on with the headers. Zach trying to bring it down, just bullying everyone he can see. And there we have it. Half time called then. So nil nil at the break. Paddock had the slightly better chances, but it's been fairly even between two teams. When we're playing out, I actually think it looks good and we're getting over the halfway line a bit. And we're not really losing the ball in our half playing out, are we? So the other thing that we've got to do is make sure that when they are having an attack, because they are a bit direct with it, so they're going to get some of that in behind. When we get the opportunity and we've won the ball back and we're in our box, it just goes. It's red zone mentality. It's just real basic, but real effective. Clear the fucking lines, step the line up, because that's the other important thing. We'll get after it and we'll win it up top. We're winning it in midfield nice. We're winning it up top nice. When it's getting into the feet of Ryan, he's fucking dusting them, but you've got to have runners off him. Can't just stand there and go, fuck me, Ryan's done all right, good fucking touch there, well done. You've got to get off him and go penetrate. That's all we're lacking. I think it's a really fucking strong performance from us. I'm impressed in so many different areas. But the final third's got to be better. We've got to crash the box. We've got to get fucking numbers in there. We've got to pick our passes a little bit better. And we've got to get better with our shot selection. You do that, you'll be three, four fucking goals beyond this lot. So one change for me is going to be Jay on for Joe. <coughs> And there'll be two more changes coming very quick as well because we've got a, a fucking stacked old bench today. Right? Quality, tall, red zone in defence, couple more shots. As soon as Ryan gets on it, I want to see runners off him because they're fucking terrified of you. Are you, are you finding the pitch? You like it? I think you look fucking good on it, lads. You look fucking good on it, lads. Hey, right, on your feet. Let's have loads of fucking energy and talk. Are you ready to explore independence, creativity and endless possibilities? Look to 10Trade, the proud sponsor of Stratford Paddock FC this season. Discover their all-in-one trading ecosystem. Learn with 10 Academy's free online courses. Experience exceptional trading conditions. Join today to trade with confidence in FX, in commodities and stocks. Your potential is limitless, just like the number 10. Visit 10trade.com to start your trading journey now. And don't forget to cheer for Paddock FC. Back out for the second half then. And as it was called there, Janeiro coming on for Joe into midfield. A little bit more creative. Whereas Joe was a little bit more workmanlike. A resolute sort of deep sitting player. Ball out for the back then from Mason Taylor. Out to Oatsy. Dinks of all forward, managed to find Omar. Great athleticism there for the uh, the flick and the kick overhead. Doesn't quite pan out with Ronnie, but Ronnie's pressing hard. Ryan Katomino finds his way in. Tries around the keeper. Can he find anything? Oh, he's hit the post. 
Was it called offside? Or they calling it out, perhaps? Hard to say. Throw from the sidelines, Paddock. Doesn't quite find its way into Janeiro. Back down the line again. Oh, my, just missed his man. Oh, see. Oh, he's been beaten for pace. Good running from Mikey, though. Tracking number 12 on the far side. Michael holding this good spot. Can Mikey get in the way? Ball's bobbled a bit far back. Five tried to put it in. It's deflected out. And there runs out. Zach, let it go there. I play it harmlessly. Worth pointing out as well when we talk about the bench as the throw-in comes here. But the bench, we had 24 players available, if not more, for Paddock today. Only 16 gets into the match day squad. It was 14. Dink sight into the sky. It's good for the net's big because that would have gone into the car park and it's something. Oh, it's here from the back then. Finds Mikey. Mikey holding up his man. Again, low centre of gravity helps. Hoofs the ball forward down the wing. Finds Shoa. Number five's on his back. He's beating him for pace though. Can Shoa do anything? Squares the ball across. Oh, he can't find his man. Ronnie. Good save from the keeper. Paddock starts to test a bit more in again. What Steve said at half time, breaking into the box. It can't just be the Ryan Katumba show in terms of pace. I know Ronnie did quite a bit in the first half. Joa didn't quite get the ball enough though, and you see that. Definitely pays off. But giving the ball to Joa, he's got the pace, he's got the strength, just like Ronnie's got the pace and the agility. You know, use both wings, make themselves a threat. And Paddock are dealing with very end turn. That player might get a booking for that. Swing in that. Okay, it's subtime then, KO'd. Been a little while, on for Zach. Zach has been uh, at it like a terrier today. Hard pressing. Well, Nosa's not happy, but Don Malloy is on for Nosa. That's not a good game. It doesn't make any sense, though, Steve. It doesn't make any sense. It does. It doesn't. I'm oh, fucking big. <laughs> That's what you want though, you want players to be upset about getting sub. No sir, pissed off about being sub, but he has had a good game. And you can understand why it makes no sense to be sub, but again, you have to trust the manager in terms of what he wants from the game. Now, St. Helens on the break. There's not many people with him. Dinks the ball across. Again, wasted effort from St. Helens. And you can see why the new boys this league are the way they are. Some promising bits. They do keep the ball on the ground well, but they've been very wasteful with their chances. Paddock have been quite clean with possession and their attempts to break forward. A little lacking in players up top perhaps, but they're working well now. Gennaro on the ball. Finds Ryan Katumba. Can Ryan push past with pace and strength? Here we go. Gets the ball across again. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Joe is going to be kicking himself. Ball comes out now. Squared across again from KO'd. Mikey. It's, it's a lot of close attempts here from Paddock in terms of getting through. Oh, it's in a high press. That's a really high line. Gennaro through to Ryan Katumba. In the box, tries dancing. Good save again from St. Helens. Paddock are far more threatening in the 67th minute corner though. Mikey's time to shine. Dinks the ball in. It's a good back post floated cross. Van Janeiro doesn't find the pass out to run the edge of the box. Now St. Helens could be on the break. Michael manages to win it out of the air. Paddock bring it back down. Ronnie's drifted more central. It's playing Dom. He's diving the shot. Oh, it's a, it's a big effort. Let's put it that way. Can see what he's trying, just uh, didn't quite pay off. As St. Helens kick us back off again, big hit, it's gone straight down field to Coward. Now Dom, again, see the runner on the right, Joa. He's beat his man, the number five, he's got the pace. Gets the shot off near post again. Keeper with a good save. Weather's taken a bit of a turn for the worst, but they'll play on, they'll soldier on. Benefits of the 4G pitch compared to the, uh, the Butcher's Arms. Ryan looking for someone, looking for shots. Straight at the keeper, that one. It's a bit bit tame. Keeper's calling for help. He's, you know, he knows his players aren't stopping these shots happening. Paddock are in the ascendancy. And it feels like it's just a matter of time before Paddock do get that goal that they have deserved. They're pressing hard. They've won it back now. It's a foul on the edge of the box there. As Ryan Katumba goes down. Seems a heavy challenge in the side of the knee. Free kick time then. Let's see what Paddock can do here. Edge of the box. It's a lovely spot. Oh, great goal. Beautiful dink, that one. <laughs> the lads are after that one. Replay of that one. Oh, look at that. It's such a, such a low dip on it. Just tucks itself into the near post. That is a beautiful goal there from Omar. It's been a while to be it's been a while since we've seen Omar have a, a goal and B a free kick that in that good spot though. So 
great to see that pay off. Okay, he's had quite a good game today, Omar. Been uh, in better positions than he was against Pilkington. As Michael there holds off the defensive line. You can see <laughs> Mason calling for positioning better from the rest of the defence. And Stalin's corner drifts in. It's played it really deep, that one. Uh, it was closer than the four was going to be, but again, it's hard to tell what's the strategy and what's just that player was the only one unmarked. Which, if that's the case, then Paddock are doing well with the marking. As Mikey breaks at defence now. Oates, he was getting some flack. Mikey's cleaned up and he's looked a lot sharper today. Running out in the wing. He's in a great spot. Acres of space. He's got players with him. Can he quit inside Fanginero? Perhaps he's going for goal. Ooh, another save from the keeper. Near post. <laughs> so Josh on for Joe. They're talking about Ronnie coming off. So maybe Ronnie will be off shortly. There's only a few minutes left in the match though. 85th minute at the moment. Josh on the ball. Ball goes through Janeiro out wide. See what he can do. Squares it in. Oh, it's not quite yet. See if they can get the back post call there. It's headed out. There's a lot of back and forth here. It's very frustrating. Paddock could score a great one as Ryan whiffs that one. Commentator's curse. But it feels like, say, any second either team could score. It's proper basketball game stuff, this. Ball goes over Mason Taylor. Mikey was around, though, to defend. Number five needs him to press, but needs someone else to come in and out, Mark. Again, driven back across. Paddock have got numbers in the box. You can see the manager not happy with this one they'll lead. Once more. 90th minute now. St. Helens in the attack. Big hoof ball goes in. Messi's back post. Mikey had gone down. Great block there by Janeiro. They're calling France, some of them are, but didn't seem to be. And that was that was dangerous. Edge of the box. Easy to do a straight drive at goal. If he could shoot, that would have put Paddock in trouble. Thankfully, he can't. Omar in the back of number 15 there. Ball comes in again. Header by Oatsy. It's drifted to number 12. And he's whiffed that one into the sky again. Second ball's Paddock is struggling with. So, running off, Daryl on. Presumably that means Mikey pushes up then because Omar and Daryl should be the fullbacks. But regardless, that's it. A nice 1 0 win and a clean sheet for Paddock. Again, it's a yeah, relatively unknown side in St. Helens Town. But it is a valuable three points for Paddock, which keeps them five points off Pilkington. Obviously, Lim Rovers have jumped them, but three points in it and two games in hand for Paddock. Should be able to turn that around so long as Paddock keep, keep up the winning streak now. But easier said than done. That said, disciplined second half. Everything Steve wanted to carry on from the first half has gone that way. And the subs... You can't, you can't blame him, yeah. Dom brought some uh, great driving intent from deep in midfield. Gennaro played much higher than Joe, helping with that overload on the edge of the box. The ball found its way out to Joe Moore on the right wing. So all in all, great subs. The managerial mastermind pays off. And yeah, no complaints there. Three points to the paddock. Let us know in the comments who was your player of the match and give the match winning free kick a rating and a 10. As always, though, thank you very much for your support and do stay tuned for more exciting moments with Stretford Paddock FC. I've been Liam Sheesby. Thanks for watching. I think there are a, little, there are a few peaks and troughs in the game now because I think we started off strong in the first sort of five, first third, but just breaking down in the final third, starting the final pass, especially the final shot, just not picking it. I think the, the fact that the wind would blow it if you open it fast as well. I think at the end, I think we ran out of his egg because over the course of the game, I thought we'd better side. We had better chances. Do the Elise eating? Just easy now. Practice shining. Scoring it. Yeah. He likes kicking balls all the time. I like kicking balls and he loves practicing free kicks. What are we saying? We're saying no man of the match. So now no one reacts when he does a free kick. Ah, because it's, it's coming. You're no. saying no man of the match? I'd say Ronnie, he cooked his to left back on the I would say me. I'd say no man of the match or. Um, I think Nose had a good game, I think Nose, I think Mike had a good game.
Yeah, we all look so like we're just mad at them. Yeah, 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 everyone had a big game. Yeah. 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 I did it too. Joel could have had few GAs today, but no one likes it, so that's why I can it. I agree at the end, it was a little bit of squeaky bum time, yeah, and we did well to hold on under quite a bit of pressure, but uh, I thought that was just because we didn't take our chance earlier in the game. I think a fair reflection of the game might have been like 3 0. You know, we had the chances, we had the quality, we had some honestly frank, ridiculous sequences of play where we really should have put it on them um, and scored. And we just didn't, we just didn't have the, the quality in the final third from open play. Um, but I was really happy with the, the, the whole squad today. You know, I used my bench early and I, and I used all of them. Um, and I think every man that was involved, I mean, we had 25 available. I think that's the first time that's happened, maybe even ever, but certainly this season we had a massive squad and I've had to leave some really good players at home today and not even have a part of the squad. So it's a nice problem to have, it is a problem to have at this stage of the season. And I've got to give the lads that are, are here on the bench the minutes uh, and there'll be changes and there'll be people that are left out of the squad, but it's not a negative reflection on them. It's a, it's a positive, positive reflection on the depth that we've got at the club. I think you've got a lot of you thinks that he's, he's going to put this away because he's he's done it time and time and time again and it's what does he get three four a season? I think Minimum. on four yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. So like like you said, he works at it, he practices it, and he, he gets the dividends for the hard work that he puts in with that. I mean, I just can't believe how cold he is. With, you know, he puts that away and it just pops off and doesn't even celebrate because it's such, such an easy normal thing for him. Like. I should be very happy with the goals that he scores like that because they're all bangers. Nobody had a bad game. Lads are fuming that they get taken off, but I'm not, I'm not bothered because it shows that they're arsed. Um, I thought the forward three were deadly. Um, maybe not with the finishing, but they were they were causing problems. Like first half, Ryan's rolling the, the centre half all the time. I think they tried to, to switch up how he was getting. We maybe didn't get the supply into him as much as we could have done in the second half. Ronaldo was cooking his fullback. Joel was cooking his fullback. I thought Nosa was great. Jay was great in the ten. Midfield was doing what it's supposed to do. Loads of energy from them, and the defence was resolute all the way through. Great talk, great line, great speed, great fight. Um, and Mason, I don't even know if he actually had the save to make. Not sure. They, I mean, they had a couple of shots towards the end, but I don't know how many of them were actually on target. Save, save. I also don't know if he had a save to make, but you know, in possession with the ball at his feet, he had a good game. So everybody and all the lads that came off the bench, you know, they they all played their part in that. So it was a, a great hard for one nil. Very happy. Brilliant. Thank you, Tom. Real fan ownership, real fan input, real fan change, real fan power. Fifty plus one. We can go better than that. A hundred plus none. Download our app, view the free content, read about the club. That's fine. But if you want more, become a member. To vote, to go behind the scenes, to make an impact, interact with a global community around the world, influencing how we grow, where we play, club ethics and values. The more members we have, the faster we grow. Support the club. Run the club. Own the club. This is ours and no one will take it away. The future is in all our hands.